Next stop on Blueprint has gone off on a tangent is Alex Gample, co-founder at Cobby Technologies. Happy to be here. Welcome, Alex. Cobby Technologies, creating innovative spaces to live, work, and play. Uh, I almost think innovative spaces is underselling the fact that you're building, delivering mobile micro factories on site to create structures. How are you doing it? Well, we're a hardware and software business. Uh, we're a technology company. Uh, I think sometimes we play in deep tech more than we do prop tech and construction tech. But what that really means is we build hardware and software and our product essentially focuses on the construction ecosystem and that product is a mobile micro factory. It's exactly what you think it is. It's a factory that shows up on site or near site to build buildings in a more efficient manner of less skilled labor. Wow, okay. Uh, I'd like to hone in on this uh, less skilled labor. So according to some stats, we have uh, around... I'll 400,000 laborers missing from construction in the U.S. Yeah, I, I think that number is more 1.4 million now. Okay, um, it increased a lot in the last month. Then. It's, it's, it's depends where you look, but really it's 1.4 million needed just to build uh, the amount we need to build today in the U.S. And the way to think about it is, you know, young people like you and I, um, you and I are rather young, I'd say, for the industry. The average age of a construction worker now is 42 years old. It was 32 years old 10 years ago. Well, and the reason why it's not averaging out is because the seven people that leave construction today, only one replaces them. So we're in a massive, massive deficit. Couple that with the fact that for the t last 10 years, we've been underbuilding single family homes. That's where you see that massive housing crisis, four to seven million homes needed in the U.S. today. Right. right. Okay. So who is this service for? So we built factories mainly because we wanted to solve the skilled labor gap. The factory itself is our product, not necessarily the home or the kit of parts or modular or prefab. You've seen that before, I'm sure, 3D printing. So our product really was meant to be this engineering feat, which is a really CapEx-like factory that erects on-site or near-site. And our customers who buy the factories, and we have a, call it a license-based partnership model. So we partner with local developers, local PE shops, local GCs who launch those factories with us, operate them, and then the factories themselves are selling single-family homes directly to small to medium-sized developers that build the single family homes. So we take away that GC function for the most part. That's a very low margin part of the business of building a home. Okay. Interesting. And do you have to train uh, the teams to use your factories, to use your technology? I think the best analogy to give is maybe McDonald's. Okay. Uh, it's a funny one given what we're talking about, which is in deep tech, but McDonald's has done a fantastic job developing a system that allows it to copy and paste its product, which is a really PNL efficient franchise. And they do it with local operating partners in a turnkey manner. So we've now spent now about 225,000 engineering hours into developing what we've built. And we can copy and paste it with local partners who basically get a turnkey solution and blueprint, if you will, to launch a mobile micro factory that then can construct buildings. Fascinating. How much does it cost? How do you make money? Yeah, so uh, generally and typically uh, factories of our caliber are anywhere from 50 to $200 million. Part of our engineering feat is the ability to develop, manufacture, and put together these factories sub $10 million. Well, um, they're capable of uh, doing about 200 single family homes a year, about 70 to 80 million in top line, about seven to 8 million in bottom line. So they're really profitable ventures in a standalone manner. Each one is an SPV, meaning a standalone business that gets launched locally. Yeah, 10 million, we partner with someone, we co-invest, we raise debt for these factories, and it's pretty economical actually to launch them. Interesting. Um, who's the team and why are you the right team to do this? Yeah, my background comes at the intersection of real estate and technology, uh, real estate, private equity development. You know, this conference is like my Super Bowl. And my co-founder is one of the most impressive engineers I've ever had a chance to work with on the hardware side. He's a 10x engineer, some venture folks call him. Uh, his previous business was developing hardware and, and lean manufacturing across different industries. Fascinating. What markets are you in or what markets are you targeting? Yeah, so for the most part of our business for the last three years has been R&D for the most part. Like I said, 225,000 engineering hours to date. Well, We're now getting ready to commercialize after building two of our own mobile micro factories, testing them, writing software on top of them. It's quite a bit of our business is software-based. And now we're commercializing in the U.S. with local partners. The first factory that we can talk about is going in Detroit. And then we have several going in the Middle East as well. Fascinating. Um, where do you plan to be in the next 12 to 24 months? In a perfect world, we're going to be making about 20 factories a year. Well, I like that ambitious, aggressive. What are the, some of the biggest risks that you're facing? Uh, listen, I think the market is challenging to begin with, but I think what we're solving is much needed in the marketplace. I think developers have thin margins as it is. Builders have thin margins. We're solving for that, and I think uncertainty plays into that, where folks are looking for new solutions. 
And I think the inherent risk always with deep tech is that it's generally a binary outcome. Right. You either create this uh, super, super successful company that tackles a thing that hasn't been done before, or it doesn't. So I think there's always inherent binary risk. Shoot for the stars and you may land on the mountain. Um, Alex, where can listeners learn more about Cubby and connect with you? Yeah, I, I think our website, kubitechnologies.com. My email is ag, Alex Gamble, so ag at kubitechnologies.com. Alex Gamble, co-founder at Cubby Technologies. Thank you so much for coming to Tangent at Blueprint in Vegas today. Thanks, Edward. Appreciate it. If you like what you heard, please subscribe, rate, and review Tangent and share the show with a friend. This episode is produced by me, Edward Cohen. Thanks for listening to Tangent. And remember, collaboration is our superpower. So stay curious and always be learning.